Hello friends, in our day-to-day -day life, we keep on listening about ISO standards, the most common that we found is, ISO 9001, 2015. The questions that came into our mind are, what is ISO standard? Why it's important to companies? How it impacts our perspective of looking at the products, manufactured by ISO certified companies? How one should get ISO certificate? In this video, we are going to learn the basics of ISO standards. To get an answer to all of these questions, watch this video till the end. So, let's begin. Let's start with what is ISO. ISO is an international standard setting body. Founded on February 23, 1947, the organization promotes worldwide proprietary, industrial, and commercial standards. It is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, and works in 164 countries worldwide. It is an independent, non-governmental organization. ISO has three membership categories. The first one is member bodies. There are currently 121 standard bodies from each country as a full member. They participate and vote in ISO technical and policy meetings. They can sell and adopt ISO international standards nationally. The second category is correspondent members. There are 39 correspondent members. They do not have their own standards organization. These members can only observe ISO technical and policy meetings. Correspondent members can also sell and adopt ISO international standards nationally. The third category is subscriber members. ISO has four subscriber members. These are countries with small economies. These members keep up to date on ISO's work but cannot participate in it. They do not sell or adopt ISO international standards nationally. More than 20,000 standards have been set by ISO, covering everything from manufactured products and technology to food safety, agriculture, and healthcare. So, some of the popular standards developed by ISO are ISO 9001 for quality management. ISO 9001 is the world's best known quality management standard. This standard ensures that goods and services consistently meet the customer's requirements. ISO 45001 for occupational health and safety management. This standard focuses on reducing workplace hazards and make sure that everyone gets home safely. ISO 14001 for environmental management. This standard focuses on improving your environmental performance. It provides assurance to management, employees, and stakeholders that the environmental impact of the company is being measured and improved. ISO 22000 for food safety management. It ensures that the food that we eat is safe. It focuses on the highest level of food safety throughout the entire life cycle of food. ISO 27001 for information security management. This standard focuses on providing security for any kind of digital information. It helps an organization manage the security of assets such as financial information, intellectual property, employee data, and information, etc. It is a systematic approach to managing information that is considered sensitive and of significant value to a business. Now that we understand what ISO is, let's understand why it's needed. ISO was founded with the idea of answering a fundamental question, what is the best way of doing this? International standards mean that consumers can have confidence that their products are safe, reliable, and of good quality. The standards help businesses increase productivity while minimizing errors and waste. The standards also serve to safeguard consumers and the end users of products and services, ensuring that the certified products conform to the minimum standards set internationally. ISO International Standards Touch Everyone From enabling you to use your bank card overseas to ensuring your child's toys don't have sharp edges, they are used everywhere. Followed by companies all over the world, ISO standards provide specifications to ensure products and services work the way you expect them to. For companies in some industries, ISO certification may be required by law or contractually. Below are some of the many benefits of conforming to ISO standards. Saving time and money by identifying and solving recurring problems. Improving system and process efficiency. Increasing customer satisfaction. Being more competitive when tendering for contracts. Getting more value out of all resources. Boosting your credibility in the eyes of your customers. Improving environment health. Improving employee health and satisfaction, etc. The important term under ISO, IAF, with a tagline of certified once, accepted everywhere, International Accreditation Forum, IAF, provides accreditation to organizations in various countries. IAF ensures that, the organizations are competent to do the work they undertake and are not subject to conflicts of interest. I have established mutual recognition arrangements, known as multilateral recognition arrangements or MLA, between its accreditation body. MLA covers all accreditation bodies in all countries in the world. 
This eliminates the need for companies to be certified in each country where they work. Accreditation bodies, accreditation bodies are recognized by IF and signatory of MLA. They ensure that certification bodies, CB, are following ISO standards and accredit CBs. There are around 120 accreditation bodies worldwide. Certification body, CB, certification bodies are accredited by the accreditation body to perform audits and issue certificates of conformance to qualifying companies. Let's understand the difference between accreditation and certification. Accreditation, license provided to certification bodies to perform the certification audits and issue the certificates is called accreditation. So, the certification body gets accreditation. There is usually only one accreditation body for each country. Certification, it is a certificate issued to a company by certification body stating that a company is compliant with the standard. Now let's look at the steps to get ISO certification. The important thing to note here is, ISO develops international standards, such as ISO 9001 and ISO 14001, but they are not involved in providing certification, and do not issue certificates. You can read this information by visiting the ISO's official website. The certification process is performed by external certification bodies also known as CB, thus, a company or organization cannot be certified by ISO itself. Now let's take a look at the hierarchy that is being followed in order to get certified. ISO is an organization that develops standards. Then IAF provides accreditation to standard bodies as an accreditation body. Certification bodies are accredited by the accreditation body. They perform audits and issue certificates of conformance to qualifying companies. Steps in getting ISO certificate. The first step is choosing the type of ISO certification. You will need to choose the type of ISO certification required for your business. If you are into the manufacturing sector, you can go for popular certification like ISO 9001 for quality management, ISO 14001 for environmental management, or ISO 45001 for health and safety management. Food businesses can go for ISO 22000 for food safety management and so on. The second step is choosing an ISO certification body. It is very important that you choose a certification body which is recognized and credible. When choosing a certification body you should identify the national standard body in your country recognized by IAF. For example, in India, it is a National Accreditation Board for Certification Bodies or NABCB. Evaluate several certification bodies accredited by that AB. For example, in India, TV, Vero Veritas, BSI, URS, DNV.GL, and SGS are some of the well-known certification bodies accredited by NABCB. Accreditation is not compulsory but it does provide independent confirmation of competence. To find an accredited certification body, contact the national accreditation body in your country or visit the International Accreditation Forum. Choose CBs that are reputed and experienced to provide a certificate in your type of industry. You will find a link in the description below to a website where you can find ABs and CBs in your country simply by typing a few keywords in the search box. The third step is to create an application. The applicant or company and the CB should agree on a contract. This contract usually defines the rights and obligations of both parties, and it includes liability issues, confidentiality, and access rights. The fourth step is the documents review. The ISO auditor will review all your manuals and documents related to various policies and procedures. A review of existing work will help the ISO auditor to identify the possible gaps against the requirements specified in the ISO standards. The fifth step is to make an action plan. After the ISO auditor communicates the existing gaps in your organization, you should prepare an action plan to eliminate these gaps. You may be required to give training to your employees to work efficiently while adapting to new procedures. Make all the employees aware of the ISO standards in terms of work efficiency and quality standards. The sixth step is an initial certification audit. The initial certification audit is divided into two categories. Stage 1 and Stage 2. In Stage 1, the ISO auditor will audit the changes made by you and the company. They will then try to identify the possible nonconformities in your systems and procedures. They will then categorize it as minor or major nonconformities. The company must carefully assess all these nonconformities and correct it as per the desired standards through modification. In Stage 2, after all the required changes are done in the organization, the ISO auditor does the final auditing. The auditor will check whether all the nonconformities have been eliminated or not as per ISO standards. If the ISO auditor is satisfied, they will prepare the final ISO audit report and forward it to the certification body. 
The seventh step is completing the ISO certification. Once the nonconformities are addressed and all the findings are put in the ISO audit report, the CB will grant you the ISO certification. The format of the certificate will be like this and is valid for three years. Surveillance audits. Surveillance audit is basically conducted to ensure that ISO quality standards are being maintained by the organization. Usually, it is conducted once a year. Let's look at the cost involved in the ISO certification process. The cost for getting ISO certification is not fixed, and varies from organization to organization. The certification body calculates the cost of ISO certification separately for each organization. It is based on Number of employees Number of processes Level of risk associated with the scope of services of the organization Complexity of the management system And the number of working days and shifts etc. The common misunderstanding about ISO certification is, it requires a lot of documentation. The truth is, ISO does require documentation. But, it does not emphasize creating new documents or procedures which are not required in the process. You should have a documented procedure of what you are always doing, and you must do what you have documented. All processes must follow the plan do check act cycle also known as PDC a cycle invented by Deming. To simplify the process of getting ISO certificate, learn and apply plays an important role. Our expert consultant in the field of ISO certification has developed a dedicated roadmap. It makes the process of getting certified extremely easy and seamless. To know more about ISO certification service, please get back to us by visiting www.learnandapply.org. We will be happy to make your ISO certification dream true. Now to end. Share this video in your entire group to improve their life at the professional level. Add your valuable comments and suggestions regarding it. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and to never miss an update, press bell icon and select an option of get all notifications. And finally, thank you for watching.